Welcome to Land Academy. This is the cash flow from Land Show, where we show you how to buy unwanted vacant land and sell it for more on the internet. I'm Steve Butella. I'm Jill DeWitt. We, we are, are your hosts. hosts. With over 15,000 completed transactions, we are the experts in this niche land flipping business. We hold a drawing to win a free property every month. Enter to win by reviewing this show on iTunes and downloading our free ebook at landacademy.com. All right, let's get this show started. Stephen Jack Butella for Land Academy. Welcome to our cash flow from Land Show. We show how, how you, we show you how to buy property for half of what it's worth and resell it the next day. Great information and instruction from Jack, that's me. And inspiration from Jill, that's me. In this episode, Jill and I talk about why you can't win if you don't play. Hey, it sounds like, like a lottery slogan, but it's way more than that. And it sounds simple, but it's really, really true. Jill, great show today. Before we uh, start, let's take a question posted by one of our members on successplant.com, our free online community. Okay. Roy from Tulsa asks, I'm working on a business plan for this land business and I have a question I want to pose to you. What are three keys to long-term survivability and profitability in this business? I love it. And he even goes on to say, I'm thinking marketing, buyer's list, systems. Okay. What well, are your thoughts? I mean, it's a, first of all, it's a fantastic question. And uh, he's, you know, I can tell by people who are new to this, the questions that they ask, that it's going to work. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is one of those questions. It's, uh, he, he's planning mm-hmm. and he's asking uh, some people that have done it, well, you know, what, what are the key things that you need? And I'll answer them. Number one is uh, access to world-class data, which we provide through data to doorstep. That's, um, you're you're at an unfair advantage, uh, which is really the topic of our next show. That is an unfair advantage, and we and we provide it for uh, all of our members. So access to world class data, uh, you're right on with systems. Um, in fact, I've been in this for since the '90s, and Jill and I still improve our systems all the time. We still change ways uh, to making things better based on what our customers uh, are asking us. You know, all of a sudden, sometimes you get three questions that are really similar from three different people. And then and that tells you that you're either doing something right or wrong or you need to change the system. So systems, data and how to use the data. And uh, man, if I could have found a great printer, like a, a industry specific printer a lot of years ago, what a, a lot of headaches I would have saved. So uh, data, a bulk mail printer that's industry specific and systems. You can't win if you don't play. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're trying to accomplish, accomplish, it's not going to happen without any action. Mm -hmm. You know, you you can't win a baseball game uh, by sitting on the sidelines. You got to get in there and play. You know, uh, (laughs) you uh, you have to get a plan, get educated, put a plan in place, and execute. You know, I've heard uh, this this topic comes up with dating. You know, have you ever heard somebody say, man, all the good guys are gone. They're all married. All I, I can't meet. Uh, I can't meet the kind of woman that I really think I deserve. You know why that's happening, Jill? Why? <laughs> are you with us today? I am. I'm. I, everybody's with you now. <laughs> Everybody wants to know that. Because you're not trying hard enough. You're not putting a plan in place. You're not going to the right places. If you love art... Go try to meet your man in an art museum. If you uh, are a vegetarian, don't hang out at the meat counter. You well, know? that's well. You still could meet a good person, but you may not be happy because you're doing it wrong. You're there for the wrong reasons. That's what I I find. But you're right. You got to get out there and do it. But and do it do it right and do what is important to you. If you like to dress up like a hooker <laughs> and drink too much. You're, that's the kind of man you're going to end up with, the guy who likes that, that kind of thing. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I am trying to think, oh, what message, when you met me years ago, I would like to, what message was I conveying you know Jill to asks you? Me? Jill asks me a lot. She's like, is this too low cut? Can you see through this? You have a whole thing about um, I do. being too voluptuous and and uh, exposed in that kind of area and you I, never are 
You really never Well, because I pay like, attention. I don't want him to, I want to be classy. I think it's important for a woman to be classy. <laughs> what? I don't think you could not be classy if you tried, love. Thank you. It's- so my point here is you got to get in the game and play. You know, there's so, there's a ton of people in the success plant, you know, way, way, way more than any that have ever, um, you know, made the decision to, to get involved financially. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm not sure you're not going to, they're sitting on the sidelines. Mm-hmm. So that, that's worse than not getting in there at all and not even knowing about it or thinking about it. It's just like torture. You know, every, all the time I was playing sports when I was a kid, it's like, man, come on, put me in, put me in, put me in. So. Right. So you're saying that's worse. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. If you know it about it and you can't, you can't do it, but you can. I'd rather not be on the team than sit on the bench. Yes. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. Thank you. This is the portion of the if then segment of our show. If you do X, then Y will happen. If you want to make a living in real estate as a real estate investor, then surround yourself with people who have already accomplished it, like us. Educate yourself and get on that path. Get in the game. Mm-hmm. If not, uh, you know, relinquish your username at successplant.com. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You know, um, it, it sounds. Uh, so it is easy. A lot of people don't do it for some reason that, you know, you, whatever it is, you got to surround yourself with those people. Say, um, you want to be an actor, you right. know, um, you got to, op- you got to, uh, put it out there to whatever you want and let people know, um, what you're trying to do. Hey, I'm really working on growing my, you know, acting career and get out and meet some people. So like we met that guy a couple weeks ago. You remember that? We all knew yeah, he yeah. wanted to be an actor. And he was actually a really, really funny, good guy. I think that guy's going to succeed. I do too. Um, and, but he, and he was doing it right. Mm-hmm. He was putting it out there and asking people questions. And what was really interesting with, he was surrounding himself with not necessarily people who are in acting, because that's not us. But he was clearly surrounding himself with successful people. He's in the right town. Right. And asking successful people, i.e. you, really good questions about being successful. You know, just like the question today. Mm -hmm. I can tell. But just by that question, and same thing with this kid, that, you know, you can tell Mm -hmm. that they're looking at it the right way. Oh, yeah. Here's a wrong way to ask a question. Why, you know, what, how do you make a lot of money? (laughs) I want to make a lot. How do you quit your, how how did you get to quit your job at that age? That, those are pie in the sky, you know, how do you be a real estate investor? That, those aren't, that's not, you haven't made a decision yet. You know, what's the secret? Mm-hmm. Those are all not the right questions. Mm-mm. I don't, we don't get too many silly questions like that. You know where I see those kinds of questions from people who, who are out there? Maybe there are competitors, maybe they're not. I'm not going to mention any names that are saying, you know, here's the secret. There's no secret. Here's the, there's no secret. True. Get some world-class data. Get yourself a great printer. Get involved in a group of people like us or whoever your group is and, and take action. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Stop listening to the people that are stopping you in your life from accompl- accomplishing something and don't dress like a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I never know what's going to come out. Oh wow. Oh. You know what's, what's great is you tone it down for the show. <laughs> I know. Can you imagine? Okay. We should. We just for oh. one day we should f- have microphones on around around the office. Oh my goodness! Well, and both of our careers. S- Stephen, you and I were walking down the street the other <laughs> day, thinking, "Can you imagine if someone was pointing one of those? What are those mics that you could pick up sounds from? You know, yeah, however like, far away. Like yeah, it's got a dish on it. Yeah, like they're pointing at it. Like if anybody could hear what we are sharing right now, and it's stuff that I mean, you should share it with your most trusted you know, person, it's stuff you're like, I can only say this to you, but some of the stuff you come up with, wow. You know, uh, when Bill Clinton was president, I saw this news clip, I'll never forget it. So they just, exactly what you described, they caught him talking to uh, like a camera guy. Oh, he had he, he had no great. idea that anybody was recording anything, audio and video. And he is just ripping this guy up and down. I thought I told, you know, I've, I never heard him speak oh, that way, like in that tone of voice, because he's a politician. Awesome. He's a politician, so everything's all well, it's well presented, and he's soft, and, you know, in the middle. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Politicians are always trying to be in the middle. And uh, man, it was just like refreshing. I'm not a pro Clinton or against Clinton. I'm really not. And I don't even want to talk about politics ever. I'm just saying he just happened to be that president. And That's hilarious. I, I just, I loved it. Well, we all, we all love it too when um, you realize that someone is a, just a real person, you know? We all make mistakes. There's going to be things, you know. And yeah, you know, there's acceptable mistakes, Jill, and then there's some character stuff that you you shouldn't do that. For some reason, politicians are, and adultery go together. And why so is I that? think that's a character problem. You know, that's not a that's not a mistake. That's a that's there's a, pro, a deep, real deep problem. If you yeah. make a bad decision as a politician like uh man, we should have never built that bridge. That I I understand that. That's an honest mistake, but like scandalous stuff, uh-uh, that's not cool. Mm-hmm. You're hurting people, man. Come on. Where did we go on this topic? I don't know. It's back to the hooker thing. <laughs> <laughs> get off the sideline, man. Get off the sideline. Get in the game. What do you have to lose? Maybe that's it. Maybe that's why people aren't doing it. Mm-hmm. They're afraid. Yeah. Maybe. I can't count the number of people that... Um, Remember, Jill, in the beginning of Land Academy, they'd call and say, I, there's a, I, I need to know this is real. I need to know this is real. And now all those people are killing it and they're doing deals and they don't, we don't even talk to them anymore. That's funny. <laughs> it's like you know, they, they used us as it uh, used us the way we were intended to be used and then moved on. Well, I look at it like some of the most, we call them, you say skeptical, but they're not. They're just, they're just asking a lot of questions because they're really serious about they it. They should be skeptical. I well, would be. I but am. I mean, it's not that they're skeptical. They just want to know all the answers. I don't think, you know, I just, you call it skeptical. I call it questioning. I call it ha- having, needing more knowledge, whatever you want to call it. But boy, they, they seem to be the ones that really take this the most seriously and really do very well. Here's all the secrets and all the advice and all the stuff in, wrapped up in one sentence about just making a whole lifelong prosperous career in real estate investment. Direct mail offers with world-class data. If you can know how to use that, that, those two tools, which is what we teach, you're going to kill it. Is it my turn now? Yes. Tell Am us I about it. You know, if you have a question, you want to be on the show, call 800-725-8816. Jill, inspire us. Okay. My inspiration for today is, uh, Anything you wish, think about this. Is there anything that you wish that you would have pursued way back when? And once you figure out what that is, why aren't you doing it now? Are you asking me? Well, I'm asking whoever's listening. And that right now would be you. <laughs> <gasps> me and two other people. Oh, we're not supposed to say that anymore. No. You know, we used to say, oh, with you are the six listeners that are. Our producer said, stop it, because there's way more than six now. Yes, I wish I would have, uh, and I mean all the way back to my teen years. If you're really young, listen to this, please. Brand your name or brand something about yourself that is going to stick with you for the rest of your life. Not a slogan or something, but your name. Something that's never going to change. Like the last name Trump or uh, Sting or Madonna. Or if you're Jack Johnson, you can brand that. So I wish I would have done that a long time ago because whatever you choose to do for a living, it's, you're going to be 30 times more successful at it if you're branding your name out in social media and, uh, and all that. Okay, let me, let me tweak this a little bit. Mm-hmm. Give me something you wish you would have pursued. Like a career? Uh-huh. I, you know, I'm really happy with the career choices I made, Jill. I know that's really boring and a boring answer. but Do you know what I wish? I would have written, I, I think I could have pulled it off as a full-time writer, but then I wouldn't be doing this. But no, go ahead. I'd rather hear what yours is. No, I like your writing thing. You wish you would have pursued writing? Yeah, and I've been doing it now for a long time, so See, it's there fine. you go. And so, and why not now? And you're, so the answer is you are doing it. Yeah. And now you are. So here's mine. <laughs> years ago, I wanted to be a musician. <laughs> Got myself, like, <laughs> seriously... Yamaha I ne- DX7. I never knew this. I honestly never knew this about you. Holly, my roommate, also had a keyboard. And then we got a, uh, um, we called it a drummer, an electronic drum. You, what did we call it? A drum then? machine? Yes. 
Oh, it was hilarious too because it had the clap noises. I mean, we had so much fun with that thing. We called it a drummer in a box. So, and uh, we had a band name. We had our logo. <laughs> we What's were. What's the band's name? It. <laughs> <laughs> this is how can how can we have never talked about this before? Okay, here's what's great is my um my roommate went so far as having the name tattooed on her arm. Oh no. I'm not kidding. We were we were in, man. I wasn't old I wasn't I was old enough, but I wasn't allowed to have a tattoo, so I didn't get to do that. How funny is that? Mom and dad said no, so I couldn't, but she did. So okay, our band name. It's called When in Doubt. I like it. <laughs> I, I thought it was going to be really silly. Thank you. Oh, when in Doubt. I Thank like you. it, man. You know, and I had so much fun and I I can't sing. No, you can't. Oh my God, to save my life. But I would play the keyboard and I do the, my <laughs> drum, the um, drum machine and, you know, coordinate stuff. And then um, I'd write lyrics. We just didn't. And, and she couldn't really sing either. So we were, we were we were obviously lacking a lot of pieces. Well, was it awful? Well, it depends it on. It was awful. I'm sure it was awful. You know, which I have some recordings of stuff that we did oh, somewhere. I I'm stop. totally serious. I would have uh, used gonna dig. Used this as uh, <laughs> as blackmail material years ago. Had I known. Yeah. This. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, you know, so my little inspiration here actually just brought up something in me that I forgot about. <laughs> so that was one thing that I thought would have been fun back then. So for for you listening, what's what's yours? And 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 if you have something like that and you, you know, you, it's still not too late. I mean, I I just might go get a keyboard. Classic. Jack, watch out. Classic stuff. (laughs) Join us in another episode where Jack and Jill discuss how to use information, that's me, and inspiration, that's me, to get just about anything you want. We use it every day to buy property for half and sell it for way more immediately. Good show, Jill. That was fun. Cracking me up about that band thing. (laughs) It's awesome. I mean it. I I can't wait to hear the tapes. Yeah, I have to. I mean, when I say digging, I gotta do some digging. I'm not. Was it like, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, like, Alternative music, like Depeche totally. Mode. Oh, it was all technical. I mean, it was all electronic. Next, I mean, it answers was, all the questions about why fun. you like jazz and all that. Yes. yes, makes total sense now. Now you know what I used to like study um, all those magazines, and I would go to some of those shows. I don't think I ever shared this, but I went to some. I can't remember what they were called back then, um, but it's. Music. It was all electronic music, and and um, they would introduce new products and things like that and i learned all about different old keyboards Mm -hmm. and old systems and you know they're called moogs i think and yeah yeah. and i would get all into that and then i even took some sound recording classes i love that stuff at college and you know this podcast is my excuse to buy toys and to horse around with that kind of stuff yeah oh well yeah there you go you're right now (laughs) we have all the equipment i just can't sing (laughs) that's not fixable no you can't fix that (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> hey, you can't win if you, if you don't play, right? That's right. Let's go buy something for half price today and resell it. Jack and Jill, information and inspiration. We hold a drawing to win a free property every month. Enter to win by reviewing this show on iTunes and downloading our free ebook at landacademy.com. If you want to get involved or you need more information about our profitable, niche real estate operation, call 480-467-0359. You just might get Jill at the other end of the line. Landacademy.com. You are not alone in your real estate ambition.